What evil lurk in the hearts of men? The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, your neighborhood blue coal dealer brings you the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. In this section, we're going to start to deal with capacitors. But before we can really start talking about capacitors, we're going to have to do a little bit of basic electronics theory. No, no, don't be like that. It's not as bad as you think. What we're looking at here is your basic alternating current, or AC. Now, our radios use direct current, or DC. So since we get AC current out of our standard wall sockets, we need to use what's called a rectifier. Now, a half-wave rectifier clips either the positive or the negative half of the AC wave. But because only half of the power is used, it's very inefficient. What we really want is a full-wave rectifier. Now, this is what a full-wave rectifier will do. It converts both polarities into direct current, so it is more efficient. However, even though we are using all of the power, the waveform is still quite bumpy. So to smooth this out, we will add a capacitor to the circuit. So what exactly is a capacitor? Oh, please, it's not nearly as hard as that. A basic capacitor is really just two charged electric plates separated by an insulator. So what this is going to do is it's going to store an electric charge. So when we add a capacitor to this circuit, it acts to store the electricity and release it cleanly and evenly. And that helps to smooth the direct current from the bumpy alternating current we started with. The problems start because these old paper capacitors are among the first things to break down inside your old radio. And once they break down, they don't filter very well anymore, and that results in hum. All right, then, it's time to, uh, to flip this thing over, and let's have a look at the underneath where all the capacitors are. Uh, but before I do that, uh, I want to take these, uh, these tubes out. Uh, they, are, uh, they are fragile. They're not particularly tough to get a hold of these days, but I sure don't want to have to unless I absolutely need to. Now, first thing is I make sure that, uh, that I'm unplugged, and I am. All right, I've got no power to the system, so everything should be safe. Um, now, before I start pulling things out, I, I have a pretty bad memory, and I can't remember exactly which tube goes into which place. So what I like to do is I like to take something like this, just some plain old masking tape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull each of these out, I'm going to label the spot, and I'm also going to label the tube, okay? Let's pull out this big one first, and if you recall, this one, uh, this one was our rectifier. And you might want to know uh, how I identified this as a rectifier. Now, that's pretty darn tough to see, but a rectifiers are usually big ones like this, and they usually have a model number that starts with a 5. Now in this case, oh, you can see it there, this is a, this is a, a Westinghouse 5Y4G, and that is in fact a, uh, a rectifier. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a number one on there, I'm going to put a number one over his hole. Like so. And then I can set these away safely. But not least, we got this cool little gizmo here. This is the little... Uh, electric eye that actually glows in the top of the uh, in the top of the radio and it's a really cool looking tube and uh, I'm just gonna call this guy number five and I'm gonna unplug him label him number five all right I got all that stuff apart time to flip it over Now, when I'm working with a radio like this, obviously, I don't want to just sort of uh, flip it over and let it kind of hang there or balance precariously on itself. Uh, so I'll get some scraps of wood and I'll build a little, uh, a little holder like this. It's about the same size and the same basic dimensions. So that way I can take the radio and I can actually put it in the cradle like this. Now, not to mention, it, it's it's nice, it's up in my face here, it's not balancing on any of the components on the underneath, uh, nothing's going to get bent out of shape, and, and I've got a good work area. 
now that we've established that the uh, the chassis is uh, has not got any major shorts in it and it uh, basically works uh, but what we did here uh, when I powered it up and uh, got the speaker to work is that um, it has a it has a hum it has a 60 cycle hum and that's not uncommon for uh, old radios like this uh, they were built back then um, with these types of uh, electrolytic capacitors and what I've done is I ordered some brand spank and new ones so I'm going to do a little bit of replacement I'm going to get them wired in remember electrolytic capacitors are um, are polarized uh, so you can't uh, be putting them in the wrong way you're going to end up with some serious problems so I'm going to start uh, snipping and soldering and uh, we'll see how it sounds when I've got it uh, I've replaced this one and this one all right soldering's done up here uh, there's one and there's another new capacitor right there now those two replaced this guy here uh, which has a positive and a negative sorry uh, two positives on this side and one common on this side and as you can see the thing was leaking and everything not nice uh, he has been replaced by two capacitors now this one and this one and uh, again they're uh, connecting to a, a common right there uh, same as the original wiring now the other one I replaced is down here you can see him and um, oh here he is uh, I replaced this uh, little sucker here mini cap electrolytic capacitor he used to be right here so uh, he's gone in there with a little bit of shrink tubing and some solder so uh, that's it I'm, I'm not gonna go any further than that right now let's flip this thing over and see how it sounds all right uh, back at it then uh, we're not plugged in we're gonna flip this back over now that I'm done soldering you see I've uh, replaced all the tubes based on the uh, color coding that I did earlier uh, everybody's back at home I've um, strung my antenna up into the rafters a little bit seeing how I'm in the basement I've got my speaker hooked up here he's just sitting on the bench he's hooked up over here uh, okay we're off let's plug it in see what happens I think this is what they call the uh, moment of truth. All right, I didn't hear any popping sounds. If I had put those capacitors in backwards, they would surely have gone pow. Well, well. No hum. The hum is gone. I love it. Worked beautifully. I, uh, I can't complain. All right, so that's uh, that does it for the chassis. All it needed was uh, three capacitors, and it's uh, working beautifully. So, uh, next thing we're going to look at is going to be the uh, is going to be the cabinet. The shadow will demonstrate that the weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Thank you.